So about 10 o'clock, 9.45, 10 o'clock-ish, I got hungry and I decided to walk from my hotel room through the mall to Planet Hollywood to go to Yolo Mexican restaurant. So I'm at the restaurant, I, I order my food, they tell me it'll be maybe 15 minutes at tops. So I sat down at a slot machine inside of Planet Hollywood right next to Yolo Shops. And uh, so we said, okay, well, we'll get back here around 9.30 or 10. And they said that was perfect because they thought they'd be over to the Bellagio around 10, 10.30. Mm -hmm. and or right, right, probably right around 10 30. so we said okay so we did we got back there about 9 30 9 45 and um my husband and i love uh the petrosian lounge that with the piano bar and everything we know a couple of the piano players there and um we walked right in sat right down my ex-husband um it was a Marine, Camp Pendleton, First Maintenance Battalion during Operation Desert Storm, and I lived with him on Camp Pendleton at that time. I'm very familiar with gunshots, gunfire, ricochets, echoes, all of that, whatever, and then I hear gunfire. Now, I hear gunfire over the sound of the casino, which is, you know, a lot of bells and whistles because machines going off or whatever, um, there was music playing and people talking, so it was, you know, an elevated amount of noise in the casino, and yet I still heard these gunshots, and I mean automatic weaponry. At 11 o'clock, right about, is when we said, you know what, let's just get a drink if she's not coming or something. So probably it was around 11, 15, 11, 20 ish was when the whole flood of people started flying in through the doors. And we heard the gunfire. And the best that I can describe it, Tracy, is the fact that it was like if you take a board and you drop it on the floor, and it was like just this pop, 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 like that. And it was automatic. At that particular time, my body remembers that I'm 48, I smoke cigarettes, and I just ran for my damn life, and now I can't breathe. So I'm heaving, and I'm, I'm trying to you know, get it together. I'm trying to calm down. My mind is racing. What the hell is going on? Oh my god, I got to call somebody. Everybody around me, we're all in one or two states. Shock. Or panic, one of the two. It was no in between. It was nobody cool down there. Okay, no, nobody calm. Everybody was trying to process it the same way, but we all just came off of this power run. So, um, you know, some somebody I don't know who it was started rubbing my back. They super sorry, I couldn't breathe. And I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to calm down, and I'm feeling in my purse. I'm trying to call my brother. All right, so I finally, you know, get the phone. I try to call him. I can't remember the number. I'm like the same number for 15 years. I, I hit messages. I, I slide the thing. Okay, I'm calling. Him. So I'm, I'm trying to explain to him that there were gunshots, and I ran, and oh my god, and I'm just rambling in the phone. And I'm just talking real fast, and you know, he's trying to figure out what's going on. I asked him, could he, you know, turn on the news, do something, find out what's going on. So he asked me, where are you? And so I finally look around, and I don't know where I'm at. It's do anything about it. So the official, let me get the picture. The official time that I called my brother that evening for the first time after the incident was 11:22 p.m. 11:22. So I don't know how many minutes it took me after I heard the gunshots to run in the basement, get myself together, and then call my brother. Let's just a lot four minutes for that, um, if that much. So anywhere between 11:15 and 11:22 is when the shots were fired. Probably it was around 11, 15, 11, 20 ish. Move over. It is the advisor, the male walking into the village. Uh, uh, Paris, the scene was clear. We're going to clear the nightclub. Shut up. Have you? It is the advisor at the Bellagio employee entrance. There's a male walking in with a rifle. Bellagio employee entrance. Nice three armored cars. At the Cromwell, but we'll move over to the Bellagio.
that night. Okay, here's something that came through in the, in the text messages from my brother. There, there was a, a bomb threat at the Luxor Hotel. And when that occurred, Homeland Security showed up. Now, here's what I find very, very funny about all this media coverage, okay? Everybody's talking about the LBPD and everybody's talking about the FBI. But I know for a fact Homeland Security was there and they were running shit. They, they were running everything, okay? FBI wasn't there yet. They were not there. Homeland Security was there. And they are the ones who vetted the bomb threat out. Okay? Aaron Rouse has some information about a, a new media plan that the, F, or that the FBI has launched, and I would like him to explain exactly what that is. Mr. Rouse? Thank you, Under Sheriff. I'm very pleased to announce that the Clear Channel Local uh, here in Las Vegas has partnered with the Metropolitan Police and with the FBI to reach as many people as we possibly can. We're starting a, an information campaign seeking true knowledge as to what happened in the events leading up to and involving this incident. The billboards will be displayed throughout the Las Vegas area. It will have the badge of the Metropolitan Police and the seal of the FBI on it, along with this, the terms, if you know something, say something. If you know something, say something. Aaron Rouse has some information about a, a new media plan that the, F, or that the FBI has launched, and I would like him to explain exactly what that is. Mr. Rouse? Thank you, Under Sheriff. I'm very pleased to announce that uh -oh. Clear Channel Local uh, here. If you know something, say something. 